Welcome to the Spiritual Reality Show. It's good to see you, Janet. It's been a while. I know. Thanks. Thank you, Vivica. I, yes, it's been a while and um, had a wonderful vacation. Being in joy is what I've been doing this summer, so I'm excited to do that. And we have, today is our guest day. We have a special guest. Yes. And I'm so excited to introduce Laura Vantine. And Laura has an amazing understanding of the soul. And her work is on her website called The Karmic Path. And she always talks, she says that, you know, when we talk about our health, we talk about our physical health, our mental health, our emotional health, even our financial health, but do we talk about our soul health? And I don't think, I, I really don't think I've ever really talked about my soul health. So Laura is, you know, coming in with lots of tips, strategies, and amazing information for us because Laura is such an, she's done so much in the world. She's been doing, she's a leading uh, person in the world for sh shifting the shadow sides and the dark and also to bring in that huge amount of light through the soul. So we're so excited to have Laura Vientine today. Yes, let's welcome her. Hello, Laura. Laura. It's great to have you here. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. It's great to be here. And thank you, Janet. Yes, soul health. It's really the only thing we can ever take with us when we leave these bodies, right? Absolutely. It's true. And I want to say something, Laura. Um, I didn't know you prior to this, but when Janet recommended we have you on, I was like, this lady resonates with me because I'm also very into the soul and living from the soul. I call it the soul state. And I'm also a life between life sleeping therapist. So I've been blessed to guide it, many people back to their spirit self and to the spirit world and to have that experience. And so that topic of soul health and soul well-being is so important today, especially after what we've been through. So I'm super excited to hear what you can share with us and the viewers. But before we get started, Janet, I just want to make sure that whoever is watching, please use the chat, the comments, ask any questions about, you know, that the soul wellness or soul, uh, what do you call What health? questions do you yes. have? Mm -hmm. Any mm -hmm. questions about the soul? please share them with us in the comments and I will make sure that you ladies get them on the screen so you could answer or as gentlemen. we go. <laughs> so go ahead, Janet, I will watch the chat. Okay, so we always like to start with uh, creating our sacred space. So we're just gonna go into a nice little meditation just to create this beautiful space for everyone and to be able to feel safe and free to share what you need to share here. So everyone close your eyes, take a nice deep breath in through your nose, down into your belly, and then blow it out your mouth. And take another deep breath in through the nose, down into the belly, and then out your mouth. And one final one, and into your belly. And then I want you to visualize going down your legs, these crystalline roots of light. And these roots of light are going down your legs and out your feet and going down, down through the layers of the earth towards that giant crystal that I see as the heart of Mother Gaia. So when you get to her, connect to her, wrap your cords of light around her, and she will be connecting with you. And now Mother Gaia will send up her beautiful golden shimmering light coming up through those beautiful cords of light that we sent down to her, coming up through the layers of the earth, coming up through the bottom of your feet, coming into your legs, coming up into your belly, through your arms, up into your chest, through your neck and up through your head. And then see it go out the crown of your head, right out the roof of your house, right out into the sky. We're going to keep sending that energy up, up, way out into the universe, way out into that inky purple universe where you'll see just many stars twinkling at you. And there is one particular star that is twinkling at you. Send your beam of light to that star and connect with it. Become one with it. And I see this star as your soul monad, your soul family, the beings of light are here for you in this incarnation. And I always say, ask them very clearly and specifically what you need help in. Just saying I need help is not going to get you what you need. You've got to be clear and precise. So 
If you need something with soul health today, something particular, do you understand reincarnation? Do you know what happens when the souls transfer? Do you go to that white light? Whatever question it is you need to ask, these are things that are so important to know. So now we're going to send that beam of light to the central sun. And that central sun is splitting into two. We have a twin sun coming up now. That's why our light is shifting in our world. So sending the cords are going to split as we go up to the twin suns. And we're going to connect to the two suns, the two energies of the sun that are coming forward. And now that energy is going to now start coming back towards we're going to send the energy back down again through to the earth, coming back to where you live, down this shimmering silvery light that I call the cosmic flush. And this is coming down back towards where you live, in through the roof of your house, in through the crown of your head. And this flush flows through your body like a figure eight, picking up any low or dense energy that is going to be that's stuck in you just let it go if you have anything lingering like resentment or anger or tiredness whatever it is let it go in those waters send it down again through into that silvery light it's going to flow down your legs and out your feet again towards that center of the earth and that right down through the layers of the earth and there's a fiery ring of light that energy is going to flow in and be burned up into light and now when we connect to our heart, you can touch your heart, put your hands on your heart. This is our soul health. This is our sacred source light. This is our, this is our whole energy of life because we are sparks of source. We are, we are source. And this energy from these twin suns is now coming into us at a higher level. That's why there is so much happening in our bodies. We can be more tired. We can be more energetic. It just depends on how you're taking it in being in the sun is so important right now go out there every day if you can for short amounts of time so let this energy come into your heart center and this energy is going to start flowing forward into the front of your heart flowing out into your cells filling your cells with this liquid golden liquid golden light of unconditional love filling up our cells and then flowing out and around us and creating our sacred space this beautiful sacred space that we all have and can create any time. And I always ask for an intention. So I'm going to start with Laura. Laura, what's your intention for today with this session? The ability to share information so that we can all unite and work together in harmony. We can agree to disagree, but we need to be civil about it. And we need to be respectful with each other about it. Mm. Amen. Amen to that. And um, Vivica, what would you like to say your intention is for the session today? I want to join Laura in that and say that my intention is for all of us to come together in the dimension of unity and to be part of that oneness and stand united to create a new earth. Thank you, Vivica. And also my intention is, and what you said is so perfect, Laura, because I, those are the words I've been saying to everyone lately is we can agree to disagree, but not everyone agrees with that either. So I'm going to send out this huge amount of love to everyone that we can have compassion for each other and, and know that we don't know each other's story. And so we have to just allow them to be in their space, whether they agree or disagree. So that is my intention that we, and also that we bring through the highest information today about the soul health, because I am so excited about the subject today. So thank you, thank you, thank you, all beings of light. We'll ask you to step back, take a deep breath, come back into your body, and slowly open your eyes. Mm. So here we are you. in our space. I know. So. Laura, this, this soul health, you know, you hear so many questions and I don't know where you want to start, but I just have this sort of nagging question. I keep hearing people talk about, well, you shouldn't go to the light anymore because the light is not the true light. And so you're supposed to bypass that light, even if you see your relatives in that light and go forward up to the next level of, of light that is there. I don't know. Is that something that you're well, familiar with? Yes, very much so. We have to remember that there's a lot of dark forces out there 
that would like us to not go to the light. What humanity really needs to learn and understand is the concept of spiritual discernment. Mm -hmm. What rings true for you and why? If we can start creating a level of discernment with our spiritual aspects, our physical aspects, if we're talking about we're talking with family members or coworkers, we have to use discernment. And so if we have all of these people saying, don't go to the light, don't go to the light, what's going to happen? They're not, <laughs> I don't know. they're not right. going to go to the light and the dark side will feast off of that energy. Now the dark side, and I don't want to scare people. They can also create a false light. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to connect with our spiritual teams, our soul tribe on a daily basis. One of the easiest ways we can do that is by connecting with the angels. Angels are here to serve humanity, but angels need to abide by spiritual law, meaning they cannot interfere with us free will beings unless we ask. We need to make the request. Many religions out there have programmed us to believe that my problem isn't worthy enough to communicate with the angels or I am not worthy. I, you know, I'm, I'm not worthy. My problem's not big enough. I'm I, I'm, I literally was born in sin and I'm going to die in sin. So why? Right. <laughs> we hear a lot of that. And so if we can make it a practice to connect with our angels every single day and use them, the more we use our angels, the more we connect to God, the divine creator source, whatever your word is for it. It's many words, but it's the same concept. So we connect with our angels and our soul tribe, our spiritual team starts to grow. And as it grows, we start to lead our life with wisdom and insight. And it's easy to connect to the angels, but you have to be specific. You can mm. literally say, all right, angels, I need some rock star parking today. I'm in a hurry. I need a good parking spot. There's nothing wrong with that. All right. If you have teenagers who are driving, every time your kid leaves the house in a car, request a team of angels, a hundred angels, a thousand angels, whatever you want. I am requesting this team of angels to be with my child in the car from the minute they leave my driveway until the moment they return to keep them safe, to keep them protected to give them wisdom with their decisions, with their words, with their driving ability, use them, but know that these angels also ascend in their ranks. They also ascend in karma, but they can't do that if they're standing around twiddling their thumbs, waiting us for to ask them for something. So Laura, may I ask you a question or share a short story when you were talking? Because I, I was really drawn in by what you said about asking and asking for your children. I remember my youngest, she's very sensitive. She's also seen spirit and she's grown up with reading, uh, seeing the aura. Um, and I remember she, it, this is not long ago. I think it's a year or two ago. So she's now 15, so around 13. And she was kind of feeling out of alignment and she was scared. She was starting school actually again after summer. And I remember we were talking about, you know, when she was a girl or a little girl, we used to talk to the angels a lot together. And now she's grown, you know, and she's not that interested in talking with the angels with mommy anymore, but she does have her little angel card deck. And uh, she was not feeling well. So I was sitting down and I was talking about it and she was saying, well, okay, so maybe I should start talking to the angels again and then she went to bed that night and she woke up in the middle of the night really really scared there was some entity in her bedroom and being sensitive she was so afraid she she froze she couldn't move she was going okay what am i gonna do she couldn't scream nothing she was just paralyzed 
And I know that fear because I've experienced it myself. So you are really paralyzed. And the only thing she remembered was like the angels. And she closed her eyes and she told me the story. It was just, it was so powerful. And she asked the angel, please help me. And that was the only thing she, she called on them to do. And she could see them around her, a light of beings, angels coming in, surrounding her with light. And they actually, she couldn't even understand how she got out of bed. She just got out and she was protected by that light. And she was taken into her um, older sister's room where she crawled into bed and she fell asleep right there. But then next morning I found her in there and she goes, and she told me that story and I go, that's how powerful they, you know, connecting with the angels and allowing them to assist you in your darkest moment because she was paralyzed. I just wanted to share that story because it's such a profound thing to experience. And so I hope that that can be of inspiration to anyone listening. So talk to your children about the angels. So, sorry, give it back to you, Laura. That is great. Sleep paralysis is very real. And these dark entities want to feast off of us. I'm going to go on a little bit of a sidebar, if you don't mind, but it will make sense. So we are in a physical body. We are spiritual beings in these physical bodies. I call them rental units, right? The better we take care of our rental unit, the bigger our deposit is when we leave these bodies, right? So we live in the third dimension, time, space, gravity, tangible, see, touch, feel. And when we leave these bodies, originally we were supposed to leave the third dimension, go to the fourth dimension as a step up transformer to raise our frequency, to cross over to the higher realms, to go home to heaven, to source creator, whatever when the luciferic forces the dark entities left the light of god they're like oh crap we don't have an energy source anymore what are we going to do well they're looking at us humans as light beings beings of god's source they're like you know what we can tap into that energy and that is very unfair it's unjust but it is what it is and knowledge is power so these dark entities are using that fourth dimension as a step down transformer of energy. So the sleep paralysis and those types of things are what happens when they're trying to feed themselves. A lot of this, we, I call it soul food. Mm. Soul food means that they are, we're tasty. We're just somebody <laughs> It's not lucky us. <laughs> <We're so lucky. laughs> no. Knowledge is power. And the more we know and our churches and religious institutions, while there's a lot of good ones out there, they really, there's a disconnect. We're not supposed mm -hmm. to connect to the angels. Um, like I said, my problem's not big enough, um, not worthy all of these things, it's designed to disconnect us from God to give us a false light that Janice was talk Janet was talking about. So when we can understand that, we can take our power back. And there's many people out there dealing with sleep paralysis. Bringing in your angels, the more you practice, the more you build your team. There's a few other things that you can do to break that sleep paralysis cycle because this is a chronic problem. This is mm -hmm. children deal with it, adults deal with it. And it's these dark things feasting off of our soul energy. Salt cleanses in all dimensions. So, and Janet knows this, that if you, in those moments where you are dealing with sleep paralysis and you can't move, your mind is your Here's power. Salt. It's getting low again. Yep, I just filled it. One week, it's your almost mind done. If your power, use your mind and what you can do, call in your angels and visualize yourself also pouring down a rain of salt all over you, all over your room, because what that does is it is a detractor to those dark energies and entities. So you're working with the angels, but you can also work on it yourself. So visualize yourself pouring down a rain of salt. And we can all do this now. You just literally you can close your eyes and visualize a rain of salt coming down over you. 
It cleans and clears and cleanses. You can do it to your entire home. Mm -hmm. You can do it to your car. You can salt your workspace. And what it does is energy doesn't have boundaries, but this cleans and clears the energy. Can you do it to your family members, Laura? You can do it to your family members that live in your home because you live there too. Can oh. I do it to my uncle Fred, who is in another state? Only if I ask permission, because we also have to remember a spiritual law, spiritual jurisdiction is a big deal. <laughs> I can do this to my children because technically I'm in charge of them until they're 18 or until they no longer rely on me financially. Now, can I do that to my 35 year old son who's got his own family? Only if I ask permission. Mm. And if they oh. say no, don't take it personally. That's the path that they're on for their soul evolution. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. So, so if I got it straight, when I asked you that question, Laura, about the soul going to the light, are you saying we still follow that light or what exactly were you saying on that? All right. Nobody teaches us what to do when we die, right? This is it. See, this is, <laughs> this to me is so important. Really? Yeah, and I mean, I hope people don't, it's not macabre. It's real. It's real things to know. Yeah. yeah we're all going to do it. We <laughs> yes. all die over and over we and over. Come but no and we all go. Yep. We don't know what to do when we die. We focus in on the living, right? The family, the living people, their grief. Well, we don't, we say, oh, he was a good soul. <laughs> what, right? What is it? Well, then what? So when we die, when we leave these bodies, knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. The 23rd Psalm, he restoreth my soul. Lo, behold, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I shall fear no evil. That really means something. There's a lot of evil in between that space. So when you know it, you go into that space with armor, with protection. If you have a loved one who is dying, request that their hospital room be full of angels. Protect them to cross mm -hmm. them over. When we go into the light, you can visualize yourself salting that light, bringing in Christ consciousness light. The Christ child was gifted frankincense, gold, and myrrh for a reason, right? But gold makes sense, but nobody ever says, gee, why was he given tree sap? That makes no sense, right? <laughs> well, they're high frequency. And I'm, I don't win the popularity contest when I say this, but sage doesn't do anything. Sage is the dark entity's tool to make us think that we're doing something. If we think about the logistics, the mechanics of it, sage is basically a bunch of dried crispy leaves that we burn. Okay. If we think about frankincense and myrrh, dragon's blood, these ancient holy trees where the resin, the lifeblood of the tree is that sap or the flower and essences of the purity of those high frequency trees and we use the resin or the essential oil it's much more powerful and it gives us our clarity it clears spaces the catholic church they when you go to the Catholic church, they wave those thuribles of smoke, right? Well, that smoke mm -hmm. is dragon's blood resin, which is very powerful. Okay. Mm -hmm. My question is, well, why do you need to clear, clear the church before the people come in? Isn't it supposed to be a holy place? All right. Let's just think about the logic of these things. Now, it doesn't mean that people who are attending the church are bad people. They're good people. Mm -hmm. They want what we want. But let's really start thinking and using our mind to improve our soul health. It's not just take what we've been given and trust it. Blind trust is dangerous. And this is why mm -hmm. I discussed with soul health. Yeah. Yeah. I was listening to someone who says, get out of automatic and go into manual now. Live your life so present that everything you do, when you do an automatic response, stop and, and rethink it and say, is this what I really want to do? Or is this just my reaction? 
do I want to, he says, just to totally connect to what you're doing so that you're in control. You become the master of your moment when you are manually working what you're saying, salting and being calling in your angels and, you know, uh, knowing that there are things around us that will try to, you know, distract us from what we're meant to go, where we're meant to go, what we're meant to do. And yes, and powerful. Again, we all have a spiritual team, but not all spiritual teams play for the same side. Mm -hmm. So when I'm calling in my angels, especially when I'm working with clients, I always salt my team. I perform due diligence on my spiritual team. I'm never going to trust that my guys are who they say they are. And what mm -hmm. will happen every now and then is what I, what I do and anyone else can do this is when I am working with someone or I'm working with myself and I bring in my team, I have them stand in military formation in rows because I can see and sense them better. If you can't see your spiritual team, that's okay. There's many ways to see. We see with our emotions, we see with our ears, we see with our eyes. There's many ways to see. There's not one way that's better than the other. But what I do is I lay them out and I have them military formation. If somebody is not in alignment, I know that it could be an imposter. Mm. And then I will visualize myself pouring salt on them or maybe frankincense oil on them. And if they shape shift or they disappear, it's not that I was weak. I dodged a bullet. And my guys, my teams are happy that I am using discernment. Mm -hmm. This is a huge educational process that we all need to go through. Don't just trust that your angels are your angels. Test them. They want to be tested. Uh, can I say something, Laura? I, I'm laughing because I have my team, uh, Zarius on the Order of Seven. I channeled, I have my book back here. So they've been, me, been, me, been with me for so long, especially Zarius. He, I, my first recollection of him was in my mother's womb in this lifetime. Of course, I've had several lifetimes with him. But um, I remember a period where I was channeling a lot and they would, I actually could hear when the, because I'm a trans medium, so they stepped into my work field and they used my voice. So I changed my pitch a bit. And you could actually, after a while, when I'm trained in being in that space and that energy, I'm trained, I, I can feel and sense immediately if there's a shift in the vibration and the interesting is, thing is that people in the audience but i'm already i'm protected but still i i can feel when the bad entities then that would sneak in the back door if you wish mm, yeah. if especially if the room or the we've had you know not done our due diligence in the space, the sacred space, yeah. and mm -hmm. how that affected me allowing that in. I, I think I've done all the mistakes in the book to get where I am today, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So I I know what you're talking about. And it's, I remember one time, it took me a long time before I could, um, how do you say, realign myself again and to trust the energies coming in. So I have to kind of start from scratch. So I know how important that is. So I just wanted to put that out there that no matter how yeah. long you've done this work, if you just kind of, okay, I'm doing my thing like automatic because I've done it so many times, ego mind, that's when they get you. They and it's you. dangerous. Yes. And we can potentially put somebody else in danger. Yes. I look at these entities as basically they're viruses. And if I've been attacked and they're after me, I do retreat because they know me in these realms. They are very familiar with me, but I have to retreat. I have to make sure I'm clean and clear before I can go out and do something because I don't want to spread the virus. Yeah. And it's, so this it's, is part of soul health, right? This is part of soul health we're talking about. It's very important soul health that it's the part of it that I don't think people are ever really, they're afraid to talk about sometimes, or they don't even want to imagine, or they don't even realize that it's around, like things like this yeah. are possible, you know? So There's what else? Cognitive do you mm -hmm. cognitive dissonance. There's a cognitive dissonance with this. <clears throat> 
because we don't want to believe these horrible things. How is it that somebody can shoot up a school of small children? Chances yeah. are that soul's been hijacked. And mm -hmm. I deal a lot yeah. with what I call soul napping and bringing those soul pieces back together. The more we can create a stronger soul, the more we live a life full of wisdom, our financial health improves, our physical health improves. If we're eating burritos and junk food, that's actually harming our soul. It's harming our physical self and which harms our soul. Because if we think of the soul as the epicenter of our being, of our essence, our financial health, our emotional health, our physical, it's all tied together. It's all interconnected. And we hear about how we're all connected all the time. That also really applies to our soul health and our soul well-being. Mm -hmm. So that Dairy Queen ice cream I ate last night really wasn't <laughs> helpful. <huh? laughs> You know what? We have to live. We we're yeah, here. For I was like more craving. You know, I was like, funny. oh no. <laughs> now, are you having Dairy Queen ice cream every night? No. Right? No, 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 no. So no. we're here to enjoy things. We're here. Yes, yes. <laughs> ideally, we're here for let this you know lessons in soul evolution. But sometimes the lessons can also be soul de evolution, which we don't want to go there, but how we act and react to situations and karma plays a big part of this too. When in an, uh, Vivica, you mentioned that you work with people lifetimes between lifetimes. That's a really important aspect of our soul health and our soul well being, because the life between lives is where we do our best learning and our best assimilating mm -hmm. and understanding of the life we just lived but we're not going to learn if our soul is stuck between dimensions as a ghost. Mm -hmm. This is another yes. part of soul health. We've been programmed yes. to believe that when a bad person dies, they deserve to rot in hell, the fourth dimension, limbo, the lower mm -hmm. astral. We've been programmed to believe that, oh, they have unfinished business to do. We've been programmed to believe they weren't supposed to die then. The reality is, is when we leave our physical body, our karmic time here is done, period, for right now, and we need to go back home. Lingering as a ghost, we know that ghost energy impacts us all the time. We hear of ghost stories that transcend ages, you know, 500 BC, India, 1600 AD, Ireland, 1952, the United States. We all have ghost stories. So if they don't, ghosts don't exist, why is that? Even the world's worst pedophile needs to be returned back home. If Jeffrey Epstein were to rot in hell, he would be assembling a team of dark entities. He would be harassing his living victims as a ghost energy. But when we put him back in the arms of God in the higher realms, they are now having access to his soul. Hmm. You know, in my house, there are many mansions for a reason. So we need to make sure that every soul crosses over. And in my book, Soul Tribe, Navigating the Spiritual War, which is oops, right here, has a crossing over prayer. If you're, if you feel like you have a loved one who sits with you at the dinner table that's been dead for 10 years or two weeks or whatever, they've not crossed mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Help them. This book has a crossing over prayer that's been tested throughout the planet, regardless of cultures, et cetera. I get a lot of really positive feedback that it's been the game changer. If you travel yes. a lot, take, get the book, print it off, make as many copies as you want of the crossing over prayer, stick it in your luggage. I mean, people drop baggage all the time at airports, right? Wow. Uh, there's That's also a, a dark, yeah. <laughs> there's a dark entity removal prayer. If you're dealing with sleep paralysis and some other things, there's a dark entity removal prayer in here too, designed to help you get a printer and just print as many copies. I mean, I have no problem with people honestly reproducing and printing as many copies of those two prayers because it's designed to help the soul 
the soul healing, the soul restoration. And it's not going to happen if people are stuck between dimensions, stuck between heaven and earth in the hells. Yeah, I think I've shared your crossing over prayer on this show. I think I did. I can't quite remember, but I always have it right by my computers downstairs. I have I have three or four different places I keep it, but putting it in my luggage is so powerful to hear and to have it with us because you could just say it forever you show up in a hotel room, clearing the space, sending them to the light. You know, anyone who's kind of lingering and lost and, you know, we just send them to the light. We're helping all these these souls that are lost so it is a beautiful prayer and it takes like a minute to say it's just gorgeous it's a gorgeous prayer i've had people tell me they don't even need to say it they just have to have it on them and they keep it in their purse and their cars and their kids backpacks you can shrink it up to a business card size it doesn't matter because it acts as a light portal i had Mm. one one man a couple of years ago he lives in germany and he goes to all of these battlefields and he says, I, he's been for about several years now, he puts them in small mason jars and he buries them in the battleground fields all over Germany. That's gorgeous. Because when a soldier dies, when we die in a war, we don't cross over. Most, and it's a cruel reality is that when we have an accident or we're hit by a car or whatever, when we slip out of our body, many times we don't know we've died. And that's just not cool. No. And I, I have a problem with the light side on that one. I'll be honest with you. It's like, literally, I'm like, all right, guys, get your heads out of your butts. Wait, you don't have butts. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm very frank with my team. <laughs> it's okay. I'm sure they appreciate that. And so if somebody dies in an accident, they may not know they're dead. How many of us know that there's this corner of a road or the section of of a freeway or whatever, where there's always accidents happening, right? Mm -hmm. There's a buildup of predecessor energy there. And what happens is when somebody is ejected out of their body in a car accident or something, or they're hit by a Mm. car, they're standing there and they don't know what to do. And they're, I've seen it many times, they're looking for help. And everybody's ignoring them and they don't understand why nobody's listening to them. So now I'm sensitive and I see this out of the corner of my eye and I look and I get hit by a car or I hit a car. So now we're building up this predecessor energy. So if anybody has an area that they're familiar with that is similar to that, set your intention to that area, use the crossing over prayer to cross them all over. It's a spiritual practice that we would all want done to ourselves. Yeah, it's beautiful. Wow, that makes me think, Laura, because when I was, um, I think I was about 19, 18, uh, and I was driving my father in Germany, actually. I went on a business trip, and we were driving fast, of course. We're we're in Germany, and I just scream because I see this boy or young man standing next to the street or the highway and my father he was like you can't because he was he got scared because I screamed because I thought you know you're gonna hit that kid he's like in the way in on the way in on the highway and of course there was nobody there but I saw that young boy confused that's when when I really started to, you know, I hadn't seen for a while and suddenly things just started to appear again. And if I had had that prayer that time, that time I didn't have it. And I was like, what do I do? Because it's, you're not prepared for that. And so would I, I would, of course, use the prayer if I had it. So just for anybody, like a tip, like you said, mm-hmm. keep it in your car, have it with you some somewhere you easily have access because you never know when you're going to need it. Absolutely. And when you do need it, you need it. The other thing I do when I travel, especially in hospitals or someplace like, by the way, that prayer is, has been put into the walls of hospitals that were under construction. I love it. Uh, it. There were administrators that heard about the prayer and they asked for copies 
created a bunch of copies of the prayer and they're inside the walls of, of hospitals that were newly constructed. And these hospitals really rarely have any issues, which is amazing. And I'm very honored mm -hmm. that thought of that, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you can also, when I travel, and again, especially ho hospitals are really haunted. Oh, because yeah. Because people, <laughs> and they're hard to go through. I mean, it's a sludge, yeah. the energy, like the fear. That. The only time anybody ever goes to the hospital for a happy moment is to have a baby. The other moments really aren't that happy, right? So what I do is I ask for an angel to stand in front of me and I want one on each side of me and I give them specific directions to remove any entity, any energy that is not from my greater good to the appropriate realm of the heaven world right now. Mm. To remove that entity and energies that are not from my greater good to the appropriate realm of the heaven world right now. And I use the phrase right now is because our guys don't have any access to time. They don't know what it means. So, you know, take them. They're like, okay, when? Now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right now. Exactly. We have to give them really clear directions, yes. don't we? We have to be so yes. clear. Yeah. I, I remember worry. having a client. Yeah. I remember having a client who was bothered by an entity and, then I removed it, but of course I had a dream that the entity was now happy to be in me. And I was like, oh no, this is not good. So I had the warning. I didn't know how to get it out. Cause obviously if I got it out of her and now it's in me, this isn't working too well. So I had to go to a shaman friend and she took it out. But I was aware cause she came to me in a dream. It's so interesting how I could see it was like a snake like woman in the, in me. And I was like, Oh, well, you don't look friendly. You don't look like I really want you in my presence. So I went and she was clear. I never saw her again, but it's so important for us to know, to be aware. If you can't do it yourself, ask for help. I mean, I helped others cleared her, but then I, I didn't realize I was not protecting myself enough. And even in healing school where I went, you know, they didn't always tell you how to protect yourself enough. They would tell you so, little bits and pieces. Um, and this is especially true, I think, with Reiki practitioners, because they don't yes. teach Reiki practitioners what to do with the baggage they're collecting. And that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If anybody out there who's looking for a spiritual practitioner to assist them, ask questions. Don't hold that spiritual practitioner on a pedestal. My first question I would ask if I'm seeking help is, what do you do with these entities? If their answer is bind, bury, or cast away, those are the wrong answers. Because like you said, Janet, they become someone else's problem. Yes, yes. Okay. They became, so became mine. Yeah. Is you hand them off to the higher realms. Yes. It's above my pay grade to know what they're what happens to them or where to send them. Make sure you do your due diligence. Bring in basically the spiritual police of the angelic realms and say, take them to the appropriate realm right now. And if anybody says bind, bind, cast, or bury, especially if you're dealing with child ghosts, that is mm -hmm. so cool and vicious. Why would you cast away a child ghost? And, and mm -hmm. I say this because one of the first things that happened to us when my, one of my daughters started seeing these things is my husband and I have three daughters and all of a sudden now we have four daughters, but one is this ghost child that started living with us and I didn't know what to do with her. And people would say, just, you know, cast her away, banish her from your home. And all I could think of was if that was my seven or eight year old daughter as a ghost, would I want that family to cast her away? So she's walking the streets even lonelier, but now I know what to do. Now I know how to help her. And I'm grateful. I never casted her away. She would have been my neighbor's problem or something else down the road. Right. Right. So right. that mm -hmm. compassion, that detached compassion in this field is important. She got the help she eventually needed. It took me two years to figure it out, by the way. But it's not a surprise, and, yeah. I, I didn't know what I didn't know in the beginning. Sure. I was a you don't, you don't know. No, like I said, I've done all the mistakes None of us in the books if there all, was a book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all trial and error. It's really learning. And, and I had to learn as well. 
And, you know, I had, I remember going to a hairdresser and she said, oh, we have a, a, a young ghost living in our house. She goes, but I, I can live with that. And I'm like, really? <laughs> she was very happy to live with it. And I thought, well, that's interesting. I said, well, if you need some help, you know, let me know. It's, if I can't do it, someone else I could recommend you to, you know, but she never did. She kept it there. She said, I'm fine with it which was an interesting thing. What, what do you think of that one? I thought that well, was a quite an okay. interesting outcome. Um, we're not looking at the soul health of that being, right? For starters. Mm, okay, good um, point. We've programmed to believe that, oh, they're okay. Ghosts can either be stuck in a location or they can detach mm. themselves to people or they can wander. Yep. Um, a ghost will travel at the speed of thought. So if I have a deceased loved one who didn't cross over and I'm thinking about him, boom, he's there. Okay. I had a situation where I was at a friend's house and we're talking. I'm like, you know, you got a ghost in your corner. Like, oh yeah. That's, you know, Mr. Whatever. And he, he <laughs> built the house and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, you know, if you want some help, I can cross them over like, oh, he's okay. But I said, they said, he's okay. And then I said, so do you have any plumbing problems? Do you have any electrical problems? Do you, because what happens is ghost energy degrades our physical sy uh, systems. So anybody uh -huh. who has chronic water issues or chronic electrical issues, there might be something else going on that's more paranormal in nature. And the funny thing about this ghost was um, I, had, I had a Mustang convertible at the time and I had the top down and I take, I go to, I leave their house and we had a great visit and stuff as I'm leaving this ghost guy sits in my car and I'm, and I'm looking at, him, I'm like, what are you doing here? And he's like, well, can you take me for a tour on the town? I'm like, what? Cause I'm back home visiting and you know, he was very polite, very, you know, he says, I would like to see, apparently he was a developer of this town. So he's like, can you take me to the airport? And I'm like, this is, you know, in my case of weird, this is weird, but whatever. So I drove, I drove Mr. Gray around. We went to the airport. We went to the, some of the downtown buildings. I'm like, all right, dude, your time is up. <laughs> and he thanked me. <laughs> <laughs> he thanked me for one more visit to these places and I crossed him over, but he didn't mm -hmm. blow out of my car either with the top down. I thought, you know, cause I was wondering what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. I love it. Yeah. I don't, I don't see them in my third eye, but I can see them in my dreams. That's when I see them. Sometimes we sense them too, or we feel yes. it or if we yes. feel it. Like I can see or smell, smell them. Smell them. <laughs> Oh, oh yes. I smell I have one. Smelled things, but not that. Ooh. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, we have so yeah. many senses to be aware of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, powerful. And I powerful. have a ton of tips and a ton of information in this book. It's designed to be an easy read. It's content dense because it I can't stand it when I have to like read fifty pages for a nugget. Mm -hmm. It's just there, and you can pick it up on any page and find what you need. Um, and it's designed to help people. So where do you, where can we buy it? Amazon? Or? Amazon? Amazon is the best place to buy it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And I, and I will totally say for Laura, you know, I've done some um, working with the dark arts kind of thing, but it was so complicated. And then when I found Laura and I did her course, it was so simplified. It was like, really, this can be so simple. And she just makes everything simplified. And that's why I find Laura so amazing and clear and helpful because she just says it very clearly and she doesn't drag it out, make it all whatever, flowery, whatever it's meant to be. She just says it out and it's done and it's so easy. So I highly recommend the book. The Crossing Over Prayer is absolutely so important. And uh, any, any final words about soul health? So we kind of went in a different tangent. Who knew we were going there? But I guess it's important. That was the question that came right out as soon as I started. So it seems like it, it was it was lingering for me. So thank you. And thank you for me. Uh, for me as well. I was thinking this was a good reminder in this time. I mean, we've been yeah. through a lot. We're shifting, many of us. It's good to be aware and be reminded of, the, the importance of taking care of soul health and actually doing the things, practicing just like we go to the gym, we need to actually do this as well. Right. Doctors yeah. have practices. Lawyers have practices. Why can't we have spiritual practices? You're right. But, you know, and ghost energy, a ghost is a soul. Right. So when we can cross them all over, 
we're robbing the dark side of a food supply. Think about that. Mm -hmm. We're taking our soul sovereignty back and we're helping others. The most profound spiritual service we can offer is helping a soul stuck between dimensions to cross over because not only is it good for our karma, but it also changes the soul path and soul evolution and soul healing begins for that soul stuck between dimensions. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I know we're getting close to time now, but I, I know my parents, when well, my parents both passed, they passed in 2012, four months apart. And I was working with a friend who has just, who passed over last year, but she said, your parents are stuck. And I was like, okay. So we, she said, bring a picture to our meeting and we're going to help them cross over. And I know we did because it was just, it was powerful. And I know my mother has come in and said that she is learning things. And my dad finally came through once and saying, said a few things to me, which I was so happy to, to hear from him because he was always like hiding. <laughs> so it's amazing what this does for our family members, all the people that, yeah, just souls in general. It's just powerful. So. No, never die. It yeah. transcends to Thank you so much, Laura. This has really, really been a great time. Uh, not only that, you reminded me, as I said, about the importance of soul well-being and just to choose it every day. Like yeah, you be, have to make aware. a conscious decision. It's not something, you know, the automatic <clears throat> thing goes on, the pilot goes on, <laughs> we have to turn it off, yep. be present. And remember that that's a huge part of our soul journey to earth, taking care of our soul, of course. Yeah. Thank you. So everybody stay in manual, do it manually. <laughs> yes. So and get, to... get your book, Soul Tribe. Get yes. this on Amazon. All the tips and tools are in there. Easy, as you said, Laura, to follow, to practice. And you are giving people the opportunity to actually copy the prayer and to bring it with them. So I will make sure that I do that. Yeah, and I think it's also on your website, The Karmic Path. Is it also on that, Don, Laura, that um, they can it's download not it? On the, it's not on the website at the moment. I'm going through some okay. changes on the website. So it's in, but the book. I, it's in the book. If anybody emails me, I will send them that copy as well. The Karmic Path. And we can Path send it. We can even, I have it right here, so I can include it in our in our little notes of the show. If anyone watching wants the Karmic, the Crossing Over Prayer. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Thank you so much. So everybody, thank you all for being here today. We're so blessed for this amazing insight of, you know, not always the easiest topic, but it was so powerful because Laura just brings it right grounded, right into the, right down to what we need to hear. Mm -hmm. So thank you again, Laura. Thank you, Vivica, for all your amazing sharing. And I'm going to just close the show right now. We'll just close it with, um, thank you, thank you, thank you, all beings of light who have been here for us. We are so appreciative for this amazing information that came through today. Laura is an amazing angel of, of, of help that has been here to help humanity in so many ways. We are so grateful for her to be here in this world. And we are thanking all of you who are listening and to take care of your soul health. And so we're going to cut the cords, send them back with love. And we ask you all to have be in peace and to take care of your soul health. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is done. It is done. It is done. Thank you. So.